This intervention started as imposing a no-fly zone. Now we're seeing ground attacks on tanks and armoured vehicles. Is this military campaign a humanitarian issue to save lives, or is it now a direct attempt to bomb Gaddafi into submission? This is a new war theatre. It's an extension of the US NATO military agenda. We have at present three war theatres, uh, Iraq, Afghanistan and Pakistan, Palestine, and now what has happened is that NATO has opened a war theatre in North Africa. It is not a humanitarian operation. Uh, it is a deadly war using advanced military material. And it, to say that this is uh, there to save uh, the lives of civilians, uh, since when do these fighter bombers and cruise missiles save the lives of civilians? Uh, it, uh, it is directed not only against military targets, it will also, uh, it will also commence uh, bombing of civilian targets. Uh, uh, this is a very serious crossroads at which we are today because it opens up a new war theatre uh, with devastating consequences for the Arab world, but also for, for, for everybody. But this new uh, war theatre that has begun, we see US and UK forces, we're seeing events unfold very quickly indeed. Uh, we know that Gaddafi's forces have obviously had uh, uh, some impact from the rebel forces. This could all be over very quickly. Uh, can you really liken this to what's happened in Iraq and Afghanistan? Well, it's certainly um, a war which has the objective of regime change. Uh, this, of course, was not mentioned in the Security Council resolution, but Prime Minister Stephen Harper of Canada, and I'm following the Canadian responses, has stated that the objective of this operation is to unseat Gaddafi, uh, so that the whole humanitarian underpinnings of this war now are becoming entirely clear. The other aspect is that, uh, in fact, this uh, military coalition has already violated the, uh, the resolution which they themselves have forced uh, on the so-called international community. Uh, Article 19 of, of, um, of the resolution, the United Nations Security Council resolution, says to put an embargo on, uh, on weapons, on arms, to uh, uh, to Libya. But in fact, what are they doing? They're bringing in weapons and they're, they're supplying the opposition forces with weapons. And I read, I read the section very carefully. It doesn't, it doesn't say, it, it specifies no weapons should be brought into the country. So they violated their, they violated their uni the United Nations uh, Security but, but, Council resolution but, right from the outset. But if the aim, if the aim is to remove Gaddafi, uh, then isn't it justified by any means to help those who want him removed? Those who have been under his dictatorship for over 40 years, is this not people power talking here? And in fact, these people have been calling for help from the outside world. Don't they deserve it? Isn't it justified? Well, that I think it's for them to, to lead their own struggle. In fact, uh, I think what is, what is contradictory uh, and ironic is the fact that uh, the opposition forces are against, a large sector of the opposition forces are against foreign intervention. And this was made clear when they, they arrested uh, the British MI6 uh, agent who came in with special forces. Um, there's no question that this insurrection uh, is supported uh, by, uh, by the military alliance, uh, by the intelligence agencies. Uh, we have special forces which were on the ground immediately when the insurrection started, and I would suspect that uh, the insurrection was in fact supported prior to its onslaught. Uh, we're, dealing with, we're dealing with an illegal and aggressive act by, uh, by NATO and the United States directed against a sovereign country in violation of international law. But isn't and, this situation uh, very different to what we've seen in the past, where we do see support from other Arab countries in this initiative? It's not just a Western initiative. We're seeing the Arab League supporting this. 
Well, we're seeing essentially Arab sheikdoms, countries which are not particularly committed to democracy and which have a very autocratic regimes and which are really, in fact, proxies of, of the Western military alliance. They're, they're tied into NATO through the Mediterranean dialogue. Uh, they are heavily armed with equipment which has been recently shipped to Saudi Arabia and the Gulf states and which is there uh, to service this war. So this is not, let us understand, you don't come to the rescue of democracy and civilians by bombing. This is missile diplomacy at work, which is leading to a major war theater in North Africa. So are you uh, saying that the international community should have sat back and watched Gaddafi kill his own civilians in order to retain his well, dictatorship. I'd, I'd like to know who the international community is, but I'm, I'm also part of the international community. Uh, the American public is against it. We're part of the international community as well. Not only NATO, not only Sarkozy. Um, and uh, I, I can tell you that this war is essentially to confiscate oil uh, resources, which constitute 3.5% of total oil reserves. Libya is the largest oil economy in, uh, in Africa. Uh, its uh, national oil company is among the largest in the world. And uh, again, uh, the, the, uh, the trophy of this war is oil. And uh, France, Britain, the United States, Canada are there uh, with the intent of serving the interests of the corporate of, uh, of the oil corporations and the extension of their influence into into uh, into Africa. This is not uh, uh, an, a humanitarian operation. It is a war of conquest, uh, and it will have devastating consequences on not only on on uh, on the people of Libya, uh, but more generally. And it's not the issue of Gaddafi. Is it, this is not an issue of Gaddafi? It's an issue of the sovereignty of a country. And, uh, and, and as I mentioned, the opposition forces are not particularly happy with these developments, as, as confirmed by recent uh, reports. Interesting, as always, to hear your view on the events there in Libya. Michel Chosodovsky, Director of the Centre for Research and Globalisation, thank you for joining us there in Montreal.